I don't do this sort of thing very often, but a Christian preacher, Joe McKeever, recently posted a list of seven reasons I'm glad I didn't choose atheism over Christianity. And after Terry Firma wrote a response to it on Friendly Atheist, which you can read in the description below, I wanted to share it and add my own two cents, because this article by McKeever is just that bad. You know it's going to be weird when you see his bio. It says McKeever has been a disciple of Jesus Christ more than 65 years, and been preaching the gospel more than 55 years. He's 80 now. Which means if he ever considered atheism, then he must have been, what, a middle schooler? <laughs> Actually, he writes in the piece that he considered atheism in college. But what does that mean? <laughs> a lot of people dabble in a lot of things in college. It doesn't mean anyone should take it seriously. Here's how he explained his experimentation. I read some of the stuff, talked to a few of the people, thought about the ramifications of it all. That's it. He opened a book, had a conversation, did some thinking. Makes you wonder what the heck he was doing all the other days in college. Did he not talk to different people or challenge his thinking outside of that? Because then he wasted that tuition money. But okay, he tried it. So let's hear his seven well-thought-out reasons for why he's glad he didn't ride that atheism train. Number one, positivity. As a rule, atheists tend to be a pretty miserable lot, while the best Christians I know are also the most put-together, positive, and effective people in the room. As a rule? I mean, I've known angry atheists, but it's not by default. If we're angry, it's usually because religious people are doing things that should make us really angry. Here's a test. Which of these things makes you angry? The Catholic Church's child abuse scandals. Terrorists who justify violence by pointing to Islam. The Mormon Church supporting Prop 8 way back when. Christian scientists not taking their sick kids to doctors and letting them die. White evangelicals continuing to support Donald Trump after all the horrible things he's done. Scientologists... That's it. Just, just Scientologists. All that stuff should infuriate you. What is wrong with you if you're not angry? That said, most atheists I know are fairly positive, happy, decent human beings. They volunteer, they donate money, they know that there's no afterlife, so they try to make the most of this life. And by the way, I also know Christians who are put together and positive. That's not weird. But it's also not weird for non-Christians to be like that. If McKeever knows some nice Christians, fine. But it doesn't mean everyone else is miserable. Maybe the only reason he's used to that is because when he walks into a room full of non-Christians, everyone sees him and gets pretty damn upset. I'm actually surprised he doesn't know more angry Christians. Because anyone who's seen preachers on TV lately, or on YouTube, or on Fox News Channel, has seen some angry Christians. Who, by the way, are usually angry for the dumbest possible reasons. Like what? A Democrat wants poor people to have health care? You want me to stay inside and not go to church so people don't die? God hates that! Number two, any choice requires faith. Since faith is required for either position, choosing to believe this amazing universe came together by chance and will go out the same way requires far more faith than this Alabama farm boy can muster. Really? It's too hard to comprehend the universe, therefore we should believe a popular lie? Dude, you don't need religion, you need a better science book. I always hate it when Christians use this argument because it really takes you from this idea that we don't know everything about the creation of the universe, all the way to a virgin gave birth to Jesus and some people now eat him in the form of a cracker. It's like Christians did a connect-the-dot puzzle with two dots, 
but they tell you it's the Mona Lisa. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's also silly because Christians have always said there are things science doesn't know that they attribute to God that we later discover has a perfectly reasonable, natural explanation. Why do kids look like their parents? Turns out that's not God, it's DNA. Why do some animals have similar characteristics to other species? Oh, evolution links together all living things. It's not God using a slightly different mold. These sorts of things happen so often, there's a name for it. God of the gaps. Some people credit God every time they don't know something. It's a dangerous game if you're a Christian, since a lot of those gaps tend to get filled by science over time. At some point, there may not be anywhere left for a God that small. Number three, historic and scientific validity. A guy once told me, Christianity is the only world religion that has come through the scientific revolution and emerged intact. Really? Because the Christians of 500 years ago and the Christians of today would never belong to the same church, even if they pretend otherwise. That religion changed over time, just like all the other ones. It's like how the Republican Party of today would have treated Ronald Reagan like a heretic. McKeever proposes this idea that Christianity is historically and scientifically true, but he doesn't back it up. There are no citations, he just says it. So for the sake of this video, I'll do the same. He's wrong. Believe me. Or, you know, read any of the books that have been written rejecting the idea that Jesus was a real person, or at least that he was anything special or divine. Or talk to the scientists who reject Christianity. There are a bunch. Or even the scientists who are Christians, but who believe science and religion are two different ways of looking at the world and that religion addresses the stuff science can't test, because of course their beliefs don't make any sense if you think logically. The problems really start popping up when you try to pretend the Bible is a solid textbook for history and science. The Bible is a lot of things, but it is neither of those. Number four, hope after death. If the atheist is true, and after death we all disappear into nothingness, then as a Christian I have lost nothing. But if Jesus Christ is true, and after death life just begins to get interesting, then the atheist is in a lot of trouble. What about that can they not see? He's seriously using Pascal's wager. That's like Atheism 101. It's that easy to debunk. But okay. Let's do it quickly, since Mr. College Atheist for one minute over here doesn't know how. Even if you want to play it safe and just believe, how are you going to force your brain to do that? And why would any god take you seriously because you decided to believe by default and not because you decided to take the gospel seriously? And also, if you choose to believe just in case, which god are we all believing in? The Christian God is only one of like a billion options. Just because it's popular doesn't make it good or right. Who knows, maybe somewhere Zeus is getting really angry. If you become Christian because of Pascal's wager and they let you in, you should seriously question this club's membership policy. And by the way, atheists don't believe in an afterlife. That is true. But that doesn't mean life is hopeless. You can do a lot of good in this life, and leave a meaningful legacy for others after you die. You don't do that for some karmic reward, but because we are lucky enough to be alive, so let's enjoy it and make it worthwhile for others. Sorry, I forgot. I'm supposed to be angry. My bad. Number five, the Christian spirit of charity. Does anyone know any charitable ministry ever started by the atheists? Okay, I've learned of two or three, but show me one and I can show you a hundred hospitals and colleges, children's homes, and crisis centers begun and maintained by Christ followers. 
At least he acknowledges the existence of atheist charities, though he didn't mention the atheist philanthropists like Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett. Just because they're not promoting atheism with their money doesn't mean their charity is religious. Listen, you give me the sort of money the Catholic Church has, the sort of money a megachurch makes in a single weekend, and I promise you I will do something worthwhile with it. But I'm not going to ask you to give me 10% of your income and use God to pressure you into doing it. And by the way, Catholic hospitals, just to name one example, aren't necessarily all good. They won't always assist you if you're a woman who needs an abortion to save her life, or a guy who wants a vasectomy, or an old person who's suffering from a disease and wants to end life on his own terms. You can run a religious orphanage, but many of them won't work with same-sex parents. They'd rather see children without families than in loving gay homes. So calm down about the goodness of all Christian charity. Even when it comes to volunteering, when religious groups do it, a lot of them are wearing religious apparel in the process. Nothing wrong with that per se, but you know when a church is helping out somewhere because they always let you know. When atheists volunteer at a soup kitchen, though, they often do it out of the goodness of their own hearts, not necessarily because they are part of a group. It is possible McKeever just doesn't know atheists do charity because we don't always feel a need to advertise it when we do. Number 6. Miracles I love all the miracles. It's weird that he doesn't even name the usual weird miracles, like a talking snake or cancer that goes away, or even the human eye. His miracles include the existence of honest inquiry among believers, which existed before Jesus ever came onto the scene. I mean, they call it the Socratic method for a reason. And wait, honest inquiry? I mean, I appreciate Christian apologists who at least try to answer difficult questions about their faith, but many believers are not troubling themselves over trying to make sense of religion. They just believe because it's what everyone else does, or because it's what they were taught to do. It's also funny that he says the church's existence is a miracle, because such a flawed institution would have vanished long ago if not for divine intervention. That is just theological humble-bragging, as if the only other institutions that survive long periods of time are perfect. That's not true. The monarchy is ridiculous, but it still exists in some places. Capitalism is completely broken, but it's still here. And the church isn't one thing. It is so broken, in fact, that we have countless Christian denominations. You put two random Christians in a room, and you will likely find two very different Christianities. And finally, number seven, living testimonies. My testimony, and yours, show that that power of Jesus Christ is changing lives. I can reply that my life is still so far beyond what it would have been without Christ. That's not proof of anything. My life is pretty good, so does that make atheism true? That's a crazy logical leap right there. If anything, people have been escaping organized religion precisely because of all the harm it causes. They want nothing to do with it. And if you talk to ex-Muslims and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Mormons and ex-Christians, most of them will gladly tell you how much better off they are because they stopped believing. Look, I'm glad McKeever has a hobby. It doesn't mean anyone else needs to take it up. Marathon runners always say how exhilarating a race is and how training changed their lives. I believe them. Doesn't mean I'm about to do it. Doesn't mean you should either. These are just seven horrible reasons to become a Christian. But what else do you expect from a guy who has only ever challenged his views for like, an hour in college for one night.